Hello everyone, welcome to Calculus Cafe. Today we're going to be learning about solids of revolution and we're going to be introducing the disk and washer method. So in order to understand this concept, let's say that we have some really weirdly shaped object here um, that goes from A over to B. So how do we find the volume of something like this, something so weirdly shaped? So what we have to do is chop it up into a million little pieces. So let's say one of these pieces is at x. So let's find the cross section at x. Okay, so at this cross section, let's call it a of x. So this is our area of the cross section at the given value of x. So in order to find the volume of the solid, we need to take infinitesimal areas and add them together. So how do we know to do something like that? Well, we have to take an integral. So the volume of this object by the slicing method is going to be given by this formula. So the volume from A to B of A of x dx. So this integral with the infinitesimal areas added up gives us the slicing method to calculate this volume of the solid. Okay, so let's look at a special case here. So say we have this region R, and R is between A and B, and it's bounded on the top by F of X and bounded on the bottom by G of X. So from all A to B, we have F of X is greater than G of X, and they both have to be continuous on this interval. So say a problem that is asking for the volume of a solid, let's call it solid S of this region rotated across the X axis. So let's try to visualize that here. So we're gonna rotate it right around here. So this will be the same region R. So the outside is still going to be f of x, and the inside is g of x. Perfect. So let's think about it if we're looking at it from here, the front side. So if we do that, it's going to look something like this. So this is what we call a washer. And we see the space in the middle here. So that's this space. And the outside, the region R rotated around, is represented by the shaded region here. So let's think about that equation that we derived earlier. The volume, A to B, A of X, D of X. So we thought about the a of x being the area of each infinitesimal cross-section. So what, what would that be in this example? So we have, let's say that from the origin to this outermost circle, so the outermost radius, remember, that it's going to be f of x, and this inner one is g of x. So let's call this one big R and this one little r. So from little r to where our area begins, that's not counted in. So what would be a of x of a washer? So let's, let's think about it. a of x is equal to the area of this washer. So in order to get this equation, we have pi big R squared, right, the area circle, minus the inside circle here, minus pi little r squared. So we can take that out. We can take out the pi and have big R squared minus little r squared. So that's our a of x. So we need to plug that into our equation. And now we have this formula. So the volume is equal to pi 
a to b, integral of a to b, of f of x, the one on the outside, squared, minus g of x, the one on the inside, squared, and then d of x. And that, my friends, is the washer method. So this is a good formula to keep in mind, but it's also quite simple to derive. So there we go. Okay, so let's look at this washer method example. So let R be the region between f of x equals square root of x and g of x equals x squared. And find the volume V of the solid obtained by revolving R around the x-axis. So the best way to approach these problems is to draw them out. So let's see, f of x is square root of x. So that function is going to look something like that. And x squared is going to look something like this. And let's see where, where these meet. So to do that, we simply set them equal to each other. When does x squared equal square root of x? Well, that's going to be when x is equal to 1. So right here is going to be 1. Right here is going to be 1. So we want to revolve this around the x-axis. So what's that going to look like? Well, same thing we do in the other example. So this is going to be at negative 1 now. And we're going to draw that same region. Rotate it around. There we go. So how do we solve something like this? Well, our top equation here is y is equal to square root of x. And our inside function is y equals x squared. And we are rotating around the x-axis, so right here. So let's think about our washer method formula. So we previously derived that it is b equals pi a to b of f x squared minus g of x squared. So just remember, this one is going to be g of x, the inside is g of x, and the outside is f of x. So let's, let's plug that in to this example. So what are our bounds? So we found out that it is from 0 to 1, right? 0 to 1. We're looking at the x-axis because we're doing the flip around the x-axis. For the washer method, it's always going to be consistent. If you're rotating along the x-axis, you have to use, your bounds are going to be the x-axis. So here and here. So 0 to 1. And our f of x, we have square root of x, and we got to square that, minus our g of x, which is x squared, and square that too. d of x, and that is our integral. So let's solve that. Okay, so to approach this integral, let's start by simplifying the inside. So 0 to 1, square root of x squared is just x minus x to the fourth. And then let's take out the pi and solve this integral. So make this x squared, add 1 to the bottom, and then bring it to the bottom. So that will be x squared over 2. Add 1 here, put that on the bottom, minus x to the fifth over 5. And then evaluate this from x equals 0 to x equals 1. And we get pi 1 half minus 1 fifth which ends up being 3 pi over 10. And that's our final answer of this example with the washer method. Okay, let's look at a washer method example where we're rotating our region R around the y-axis this time. So we're given one function, x equals 4y. So 
that's going to be a straight line. And then x equals y cubed, which is going to look something like that. So there is our region R. And we want to rotate this around the y-axis to create a solid. So let's visualize that. So we're going to rotate it around here. And we're going to get that same region R, oh, let's make it look a little more the same. Okay, that same region R rotated across the y-axis. So we need to find where they meet at this y point right here. So what we have to do to do that is set y cubed equal to 4y. And we're going to get, we have to separate y squared minus 4 equals y cubed minus 4y, 0. You're going to get the y equals 0 and plus or minus 2. So that means that they meet right here at 2. So let's label our functions here. This is 4y and this is y cubed. So now let's think about which one is our f of x and which one is our g of x in this situation. So now the one on the outside is this guy right here, 4y. So that is going to be our f of x. And this is on the inside. So this is going to be our g of x. So let's put that into our washer method equation here. So pi and our bounds now are from 0 to 2. And let's plug in 4y squared minus y cubed squared dy, right? Because we have our outside function right here and our inside function right here. And if you evaluate this integral, you're going to get 5 12 pi over 21. So Something to keep in mind with the washer method, this will be more useful when you have to determine what to use between washer and shell and how to use each one. So if you're doing the washer method and you're rotating around the y-axis, you need to use the y-bounce. And if you're rotating the x-axis, you use the x-bounce. So with the washer method, it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. So there's that example. So now let's think about the disk method. So for the disk method, when g of x is equal to 0 in the solid of rotation about the x-axis, then the washer method becomes disks. So the washers become disks, right? So that is what we call the disk method. So instead of having a function that gives us like a hole in the center, we now have a disk, so we don't have to worry about that hole. So let's look at an example of this. So we have R, which is region bounded by f of x equals square root of x. So that is a function that looks like that. And the line x equals 1. So that is going to be right here. So x equals 1 is this line. So the area of the region R that we're looking at is right here. And this problem is asking us to find the volume of this rotated along the x-axis. So when we visualize that, we see this. And if you look at it to the side, it's just going to form one big disk, and that's where it gets its name. So let's label our functions here. So this is going to be f of x equals square root of x, and this is where it is bounded by. And on the bottom, it's just bounded by the x-axis. So let's plug that into our equation. So we got b equals pi. 
and we're going from here, since we're going over the x-axis, from 0 to 1, because it is bounded by x equals 1, 0 to 1, so that's where we get those bounds. And our f of x is square root of x squared minus, right, g of x is 0, right? It's the x-axis, so 0 squared, so we can just kind of ignore that. d of x, and then we evaluate this integral, we have pi squared over 2 from 0 to 1 and we are going to get pi over 2. So that is the disk method. So it's pretty much the same.